Okay, so the biggest thing that I've been thinking about lately is this idea of arrogance and humility in sort of a dialectical relationship on some sort of scale where in the middle there's this sweet spot almost of the capacity for leadership in yourself and through leading yourself in leading others by example. And when I think in terms of myself, uh, there is always this fear in me about not realizing that I am an arrogant person or that in the way that I'm understanding myself, it might be thinking I'm uh, existing with integrity and that I'm humble because I'm, uh, you know, always criticizing myself or, you know, trying to self-reflect and think about things differently. Um, but then transferring or projecting out some type of image of myself that people interpret and project back at me that I'm arrogant. And yeah, that's a fear that I have and a reason that I find it difficult to put myself out there or creatively express myself or share my opinions. And it's definitely easier when you're creating these little snippets of videos where you're just interacting with yourself almost because it's less performative in a way. It's everything sort of performative, but I find when I'm in a, a real life situation, uh, it takes so much practice and immediate awareness, almost a habitual capacity to uh, navigate um, a relationship with something or somebody and, you know, per preventatively be able to feel your emotions and the feelings that you have in relationship to the ideas and the opinions that you might be articulating and sharing with somebody and should they not understand you or not agree with whatever opinion or direction you see yourself moving in. Um, to not be able to catch yourself in the emotional attachment or uh, identification that you have with your opinions, your beliefs, and your values. So that's sort of just a long-winded way of saying that I, throughout my life, I've caught myself getting enthusiastic and amped up that I have this belief and it's so strong. And usually it's, it's a positive, optimistic, belief, especially about the people that I know in my life, and it's always about human potential and reducing suffering. So I'll be like, oh my god, you know, like, I absolutely believe you can do it. And then thinking that in justifying my belief that I'm helping or I'm being uh, optimistic or helping them to leading them into this new perspective, when in reality, I'm not recognizing that the idea I have or the opinion or the belief or the value is not me, <laughs> you know? It's like I am but an individual in relationship to my beliefs and my ideas and my values. And it's in that space, it's in recognizing that space in between you and these ideas and the expression of whatever you believe that you either unwittingly become arrogant in over identifying and being merged with your beliefs and your ideas um, or you have the skill of humility which is to recognize the subjective nature of you being connected to your beliefs ideas and values and within that recognition you're able to also understand that somebody else is having the same equal yet totally unique to them, subjective relationship to the very same values, beliefs, and ideas that you're proposing. And you might be right in the sense that, of, you know, of course that would be like the direction we would all want to go together where somebody does believe in their potential and can have the capacity to reduce the unnecessary suffering in their life or whatever have you the belief might be. But you know, arrogance is almost a tragedy in the sense that 
it's almost like a codependent state of being. I, I think that the way that I understand arrogance and when I find myself being interpreted as arrogant, it's because I'm so meshed with uh, the belief or the value, um, you know, in a way that, you know, it's just passion, like it's a passion and I care and, you know, the belief in itself is honorable, but the expression of it, you know, in, it invalidates the distance of another person. And through that invalidation, um, you know, I, it's like, you're not, you're not relating to the person. And it almost sounds like, you know, you can do it. It's like, you're out of the present moment and you're not meeting the person where they are, which is that all of that life experience and the things that you've been through that have given you the link to yourself in connection and to the belief or the value or the position you're in now, which you've grown into through experience, right? Like knowledge dots and then the experience connects them. That person doesn't have that, you know, and that's the reason that this situation is probably even having. So it's like, if you believe that blue is better than red, uh, well, your life experience is probably predicating you coming to that realization. But if somebody has never had the experiences that you've had, well, then it just sounds like, you know, what about me? Like if somebody's trying to tell you something and it's, you know, we're all human beings and we live in a body. So it's like to some degree, either they're aware of how they got there or it's almost like they're ignorant to how they got there. And the person is needing you to become aware of how you got there because it's in that story that moves people together in a different direction or wherever you're hoping to go together. So basically what I mean by that is humility is a skill in the sense that if you're humble, you understand the value of that subjective reasoning that got you to a belief and you understand that it's irrational to think that the power of your knowledge is going to be sufficient in moving with another person towards whatever you believe is a better um, place or perspective to be in. And it's like, as a human being, our, our forte and our strength and our potential is in mastering that humility and that ability to recognize our subjective experience and to not feel meek or lower of ourself because we can't convince people through the sheer force of our knowledge alone because that's the trap of arrogance and i think what i'm realizing as i you know constantly i'm self-reflecting that that I'm afraid of being perceived as arrogant because what I value is so important to me that um, I hate getting in my own way. I hate when I accidentally might be making something about me, even though it's well intended, but it's not efficient. And in that inefficiency, when I have to meet myself and sit with myself at the end of the day and reflect about it, it feels frustrating to be stuck in a loop of learning about yourself simply because you're repeating a pattern of being overly enthusiastic about whatever you value without recognizing that, you know, the value of whatever you know is in the self-recognition of the journey of how you got there. So for me, one of the examples of this is where people will say, if you want to lose weight, you just have to exercise and work out and eat well. And it's like, 
you know, as somebody who has been bigger and fit and everything in between, um, you know, and is pretty smart and studied all sorts of different things relevant to this, it, it never mattered. It never mattered that I knew rationally and intellectually and even emotionally, like the value of that knowledge, like eat right and exercise. And if anybody was to say that to me, you know, it didn't matter how amped up they were, it didn't resonate with me. So if somebody was to keep saying like, this worked for me, like you just have to do this, like it just starts to sound, you know, in that realm of arrogance because they're forgetting that it was every moment in between that got them to be able to even um, be so confident in the position that they hold. And then of course, sometimes we hold positions where when we reflect on our reasoning, we realize that that position probably isn't actually that great. Anyway, yeah, so I've just been thinking about that and like developing this skill of humility, which is not to think lesser of yourself, but to just recognize the reality of the limitations um, as a positive thing in being a human being and being able to like effectively relate and share things that are actually of value to us. But value is not just knowing something is true. Um, you know, the second that you want to share that or or see a practical application beyond the self, part of truth becomes the capacity to relate that truth and have somebody be able to resonate with it and integrate it into wherever they're starting from. So meeting people where they actually are. So if you're excited about something or something is a good idea, it should be able to resonate in the present moment for people and they should feel the same feeling that you're hoping they're going to eventually be able to believe. So we want to focus on what is happening right now and our capacity and our potential in the present moment versus, you know, believing in our potential because of a theoretical in the future because that just feels like an obligation and something like you know i have to change and be different because i can't access that in the present moment like this person believes i could eventually do but they're not believing that it exists right now and it's like that is what i'm afraid of doing with people because i know that when I'm creating that in a situation, it's coming out of the motivation of guilt, you know, like the guilt of my lived experience and conditioning of thinking that I'm responsible for everybody's feelings and that I, if people are suffering, like I have to help them and I have to change them and I have to, you know, until I help them and fix them, I can't rest in my own value or my own reality sort of thing. So, yeah. That's what I've been thinking about.